And we're back for a power-packed hour three. The preparedness, uh, civil defense, and earth changes panel is here. John Moore, of course, he has his national radio show on Republic Radio, 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. The website is thelibertyman.com, thelibertyman.com. Ann Morrison, our scientist, is here, expert on UV radiation, volcanology, and earthquakes uh, and radioisotopes. Ann Morrison's website is homeland-defense, number 4u.com. That's the letter u.com. Homeland hyphen defense for you. And at the bottom of the hour, Robert Felix will be here. Robert's website is, is iceagenow.info, iceagenow.info. And you can see a lot of these disparate things actually happening as we speak. Uh, the radiation level, when I fly next week, by the way, on Thursday evening, I will be taking my Inspector Plus, and I'll be reporting on Friday if we had a, a surge in radiation. It's the Alaska Airlines I'm taking, which are the ones reported to have bad dry cleaning. Well, sorry, it's not bad dry cleaning when hundreds of people are there and you're not detecting or checking the aircraft, though, as they did initially after Fukushima to see if the aircraft skin was, in, uh, was, was showing off radioisotopes or the aircraft interior, and there's no HEPA filter with a chain of custody form going off for radiation detected or for pathogens. Nothing's been done right. And I remember meeting six months before 9-11 with the FBI and the CDC director at a private lunch, just me and them, and the director for infectious disease at the University of Colorado, VA hospital, and the University of Colorado director of infectious disease. And I met with these three gentlemen for an hour and a half, and we talked about specific recommendations I made with, doc, with Dr. Uh, uh, Hughes, who is the reserve admiral, and we did work for the Center for Disease Control, the hazmat teams, the FBI, and CDC. And I was the point man under these guys. Not a minion, I was a point man when we did these war game simulations for the U.S. federal government. And the fact is they never followed any of my recommendations, which is to have a air filtration system, a chain of custody for pathogens in every aircraft. And now to check every aircraft should be done with a chain of custody for radiation and a radioisotope analysis with what's called neutron spectroscopy. None of these things are happening. None of the reports are happening at any altitude to see if there's a radiation plume at a specific altitude. And I guarantee you that the Alaska Airlines stewards and stewardesses are not having dry cleaning problems. I'm going to find out. Now, if we fly through a radiation plume like I got about a month, month and a half ago, I had a report sent to me with an actual photo of the inspector plus you know, this gentleman that flew through 30,000 feet over Washington State, and the inspector went well over 1,000 counts per minute, and it's normally 25 to 50 CPM. I'm going to be slapping on an IOSH mask on myself, my wife, and my daughter. To the consternation, and I'm sure the freaked out screeches of airline stewards and stewardesses is, what am I doing? I said, my doctor told me to do it. And said, who's your doctor? I said, me. I'm an activist in the Academy of Environmental Medicine. I'm not going to put up with crap. I'm not going to put up with them flying through radiation plumes and not even having an air filtration system, which includes a three-stage carbon filter, HEPA filter, and buckyball you know, nanoparticle filter. We're not seeing any of these things being done. We have no chain of custody. We have nothing. And I don't care if it's an extra five bucks on an airline ticket. Damn it, why aren't they doing it? Especially now when these radiation plumes are coming across their airspace. We see nothing. And I talk about concrete recommendations, not garbage, like all these remonstrations by so-called experts that go on various radio and television shows or the snooze media. I call it the lame brain media. They don't have any background or radiation credentials or anything, and they come on and they remonstrate of, oh, we, we think they should do something. Well, we'll tell them specifically what the hell they should be doing, but they're doing nothing because it's to their advantage to do nothing, and that includes the Obama prancing around Hollywood getting more gay and lesbian money to support his candidacy so he can kill more of us and support destruction of the family. So, uh, you know, if people detect I'm a little bit more angry than usual today, well, I got damn good reason for it. And uh, when people don't listen to me, whether it's personal uh, consultations I do for people, some of them celebrities, or people that are, are just regular people, or people that take my information and then don't proceed with getting the nutraceuticals and the free advice from us, and they have harm come their way, it grieves me. It grieves me. It grieves me greatly to see this. And we don't see anything happening. We don't see anybody responding to, uh, to uh, Ambassador Murata. We don't see anybody responding in the Congress and Senate to uh, Dianne Feinstein and Senator Wyden's going to the uh, Fukushima Daiichi, and Senator Wyden is still freaked out. Senator Wyden, we need to contact you. We need to get you on the program. Uh, you know that you're still freaked out because you know that this giant dock just landed on the coast in, uh, I believe, in uh, Oregon. I mean, uh, 
giant concrete and steel dock lands in your place in Oregon and say, well, well, I guess we'll pay to get rid of it. It's not radioactive. It's like, well, you hope it's not too radioactive. What kind of detectors are you using? Um, but nevertheless, 5 million tons of this crap is going to end up here in America, and that's only the material, the constant surge of radiation, is going to make our crops sequentially, year by year, more and more radioactive from bioaccumulation. And oh, by the way, don't. Dr. Bill, Dr. Yes. Bill, they uh, they asked the federal government if they were going to uh, clean if they were going to clean up the trash that's being dumped along the west coast, right. and they said no, it's up to the states. Yeah, that's disgusting. See, there's more of the garbage from Obama. And uh, you know, there's a report here from uh, the uh, Technorati. It says Fukushima Reactor Four release would doom Western United States. It's not just dooming Western U.S. I mean, the, the fact is, this radiation plume, and they have these little models that don't even make sense. The radiation plume isn't just a plume that comes up like a big, you know, like a spray over your garden. It's a plume that may often hold together quite tightly at a specific altitude, can, and it can go over the pole. It doesn't have to go, quote, west and then turn south toward California. It can go over the pole and land in England. It can land in Norway. It can land in Central Europe. It can cross over the uh, Alaska or Canada and end up in the Midwest or down in Florida. And uh, it can also get in a high altitude in these special... Uh, we call altitude rivers that have hundreds of times more water per day than the water that move in the Amazon River and carry it south to the southern hemisphere. So these simplistic models are stupid because they're not based on data. We need data. We're not getting it from anywhere. And whenever I request data, just like I've requested for now years, many years, data on the World Trade Center complex, trying to get radioisotope analysis of material I have sitting literally in my studio desk, right from blown right across to an apartment right across the street from the World Trade Center complex when it was demolished by nuclear uh, uh, bombs, nuclear weapons, in a chain of pearls plus the super thermate cutter charges of the outside. I can't get any labs to do it, and they threatened that if I even request a test at a U.S., British, or Canadian lab, I'll be arrested by the Department of Defense and their functionaries, the FBI here. That's what they've told me. If you ask for the specific kinds of tests you want, we're arresting your tail deagle. Come on and arrest me. I'm requesting a damn test, and I can't even get the material to them because they won't request it. Even my old alma mater, where I did my chemistry training years ago, I can't get them to do the type of testing to identify this. We don't get an analysis of isotopes in the fish. They're not even going to tell us, the Canadian government, what fish and where and what the results are going to be. They said, well, we're going to test it. They'll just tell us, oh, we test it. It's fine. Keep on eating your tuna. You know, come on. This is this is sickening. It's aggravating. And the fact is they aren't going to... Not talk about the fact, but nurses work in the ICN, intensive care nursery, are going to say, gee, we're getting an awful lot of dead kids. They're working on senior citizens and say, oh my gosh, funny, last Thursday night, we had a lot of people that packed it in. They were 80 years of age or 75 or 45, but they had a major traumatic accident. That's because of a major, major radiation stressor. It'll push you over the edge if you're hanging on by your fingernails in the intensive care unit. Uh, we're going to see a lot of cancer, a lot of strokes, a lot of birth defects, a lot of autism, a lot of everything. In the midst of a health care crisis where Obama is getting rid of our top-level health care system and substituting and Nazi death panels. This is just nuts. And I don't have a lot of faith that our Supreme Court is going to fix it. Um, so let's go on. To, uh, and what do you see happening with earthquakes and volcanoes and uh, all the other things that are into this mix of disaster this timeline well we are going to see we, we are expecting you know that earthquake that occurred out there by japan well that's and a biggie we, we, uh, is that the recent one that just happened a, a week ago no no a year ago and then yeah, the one, in, the one in chiba, chiba near chiba prefecture was a 6.3 or 6.4 and its effect down in and near fukushima was 5.2 their 5.2 is literally one every three to four days all we need is a six level right at the site, and that reactor four cooling pool is going to fall. That's the report from their experts. Well, we're expecting a 7.8 within the next 20 years. We know that's going to happen. No, no, not 20 years. What they tell me is the likelihood of a level of an earthquake large enough to knock over the reactor cooling pool is a virtual guarantee within the next six months. Six months. Yeah, six months for that cooling pool to fall with a large enough earthquake. And the neutron annealing of the metals, the material, and the seals that are bursting. And now the two pumps fail there, and we're acting cool. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. And uh, the, uh, you know, 
all of these things are show that the real history of things that's going on is completely different. I pulled up some documents uh, um, about uh, a Mr. I guess a senior engineer. His name was Ragsdale. And I'll get into more details on this at another time. But in fact, our nuclear program was in collaboration with the Germans and the Japanese. And the first nuclear test was not a bomb drop over uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. It was over the Bikini Atoll in 1939 with German scientists and Japanese scientists. The Japanese had five cyclotrons making nuclear isotopes. The Germans had developed a technique using what's called scalar frequencies with Nikola Tesla's type technology to use what's called scalar ionic separation to create uh, at relatively low energies, extremely high uh, grade plutonium, which is made by neutron insertion to create these heavy isotopes. Uh, the German scientists were working with in collaboration, and as part of the Operation Paperclip, our supply of plutonium, which we later dropped in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, was in collaboration with the Germans as part of Operation Paperclip to bring out 100,000 technicians and German scientists to America. As part of the deal, they would hand over their nuclear material to our American teams, who later would drop it on Japan, who was working before the Second World War in collaboration with America on these nuclear uh, projects. So history that you think happens is not the truth. And we're going to bring on other experts to talk about this, but that's why when we see Fukushima going on, this is all by design. The pink element in the room that's 3 million tons is the fact not that Fukushima happened, and some fools try to say it was caused by a nuclear bomb at the bottom of the great, uh, you know, the Sendai Ridge out there uh, causing this super quake. You're at Earthquake Central. Earthquakes are increasing because we're moving through a period of time space at the galactic plane. It's going to increase earthquakes 500% since last year, and they're going to increase considerably more. In fact, it's predicted that next year, 2013, a kill shot is very likely to hit the power sources across the planet. We know also that Sendai, Japan, is probably going to pop the next major burp of radiation, and that's, by the way, the not last. And people need to realize food supplies worldwide are going to crash, it's going to be very difficult to get non-radioactive food. People need to realize that this is tied directly to the collapse in the commodities market, the collapse in the Japanese economy, the collapse of Europe with the interlocking debt, which is the mechanism to bring in the mark of the beast. And guess where the mark of the beast is going to come from? America. And that's why people think, oh, no, it's going to come from Europe, from Brussels. It's going to come from Beijing, China, or Russia. Wrong -o. And the Russians, by the way, have got the Chinese totally on their string, and so they have all these so-called Sovietized Muslim countries around them and the Arab countries. The Russians are the bipolar opposite. The beast dictator, Mr. Vladimir Putin, who's trying to look like a big hero there, and we've got Obama, the snake in the grass, Obama. That's how bad it is. And in the next year, I just unless the trajectory changes, I cannot see... Mitt Romney getting elected. I think that here's a timeline. I'll repeat it for those who haven't heard before. I expect a major release of radiation and evacuation in the next month or two in Japan. I expect the economy in Europe to hit a crisis this summer. And by early fall, we'll have a bank holiday from five days to two weeks in America. And in a sense, a form of martial law. It won't be martial law. It'll be maybe foreign troops at banks with holding air machine guns and black ski masks. So you won't know if they're foreigners like Mongolian spitz knots or they'll be American special forces. That's what their game is. They'll have a black ski mask guy. You won't know if he speaks Russian or whatever the hell he is. And that's what their game is, is to make you very afraid and don't come against the authorities, whoever the hell they are. And then what they want to do is bring in a world system where they're going to bring in a partially, supposedly backed world G20 currency with American credit no longer under control of our Congress so that our government, which basically are your lawmakers, your Congress and Senate and your president basically determine laws that determine how money is spent. And when your money is no longer under your control but under a globalist G20 government under new rulemaking globally, your government is vestigial. So it's, it's Obama's job in a post-colonial world to make certain that America is no longer relevant. And he's doing a damn good job, isn't he? Absolutely, he is, yes. That's his job. And if he succeeds in the next term, especially if he makes more stupid appointments to the Supreme Court and the Congress don't do their job, which is to pull these Supreme Court justices, if they don't strike down Obamacare and Congress does not start removing these Supreme Court justices from the bench because of unconstitutional uh, uh, lawmaking or law interpretations, then Congress is, is basically uh, getting exactly what they deserve. They become vestigial, meaning like a vestigial appendix. 
we have a vestigial government where global rulemaking, global banksters will run everything, and private property will be a thing of the past. They'll eventually push the population when they become totally bankrupt into highly compact cities. And Agenda 21 discussed at the Bilderberger meeting will take full effect where they'll rewild the world, like in the 1992 Rio conference that we talked about uh, in the past year, that the, you know, the uh, nationals, uh, the NSM uh, 200 report of 1974 with uh, Henry Kissinger, the reports going back six, seven years earlier that revealed on Alex Jones' uh, TV channel, they talk about, uh, they were re- reported from the Bilderbergers. This is all real. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's disgusting for people to actually have the nerve to open the damn mouths and try to say it's a conspiracy theory when it's just a fact, and they don't have a right to the facts when the facts just speak for themselves, do they? No, not even a little bit, no. Yeah. So, John, uh, where do you see this going? What's going to happen? Because we know that if Obama gets a second term, here's the agenda. They want to ram through, if not Obamacare, take it apart and put back together something which is Obamacare anyway, Obamacare 2 or Obamacare Lite. Number two, they want to put in the United Nations uh, small arms ban. They want to get rid of our guns. Number three, they're going to continue telling us that the economy is doing fine, although the unemployment rate, because they fiddle the statistics, is going to get worse and worse. And young people get saddled with bigger and bigger debts, so they can't literally ever get under the, the debt mess and ever own a home or a car or even live and get away from their parents, even if they continue to go to school to put off paying back their school debts. Now, I'm not a communist, but I think if you're educated, you should... If you're qualified, you should be able to get all your education paid completely. And I don't care if you put in a percentage of it, but the idea of saddling our young people with the debt so high that they can never start a business, own a home, have a car, or a family is an obscenity. And that's what's doing is taking away our future from our next generation. That's why we're in such a mess. I agree. Well, the, the powers of being know that a really bad crisis can allow them to accelerate everything they want to do exponentially. And uh, so that they'll create a crisis so they can move forward very quickly for, for people to accept things they would never accept otherwise. Exactly. So I expect the crisis of the, this is how Obama will try to get back in, because if the election was happened tomorrow, Mitt Romney would get elected. Mitt Romney's got several problems. Firstly, a large number of the delegates are voting for uh, want Ron Paul in. Now, Ron Paul has a lot of positive things, but he has some very negative things. He believes in von Mises economics, which is Austrian royalty economics, which is the worst of what I call the, the, the feudalism of the Middle Ages. He also believes in states' rights, that states determine whether an abortion is, should be legal or not, and it should be a national law that he, the, we call the defense of life law, a personhood law, which if you kill a mother and their baby, say at seven months, and the baby could survive in the intensive care nursery, you have committed two murders, not one. Okay, and this is an issue that was brought up in the Canadian government back about uh, seven, eight years ago, and I actually spoke on national news about this in Canada, talking about this issue. The fact is, the conservative government tried to bring this law forward, and the the outcry from the so-called maniac, atheistic, bisexual, pedophilic uh, left in Canada was obscene, because they didn't want to have any issue dealing with the idea of inheritable rights of a child that could survive in the intensive care nursery, because if someone killed a mother and their child... A little side note, Dr. Deagle. In the state of Missouri, you're allowed to use deadly force to protect the life of an unborn child. Exactly. Personal issues should be dealt with if, if Mitt Romney repents before his mortal. Welcome back. I uh, want to start off with a quick story. Um, we have Robert Felix on the program now, and uh, John is gone. He'll be back next week. John, Ann, and Robert, you'll be hosting the show next Friday without Dr. Deagle's interruptions, but I'm sure it'll be high energy, despite the lack of the, of the D factor. Um, a little story about uh, running out of food. I remember back in 1987-88, I worked in uh, central Illinois, and uh, I was actually, no, I was actually, no, 97, I mean, 97, that was a junket down in 97. I was in central Illinois, and I remember when I worked out there in Pekin, I was a director of the emergency department occupational program. We had the second largest gas haul plant in, in, the, in the United States in Pekin. So one day I was driving in the spring, so miles and miles of corn. I think, gee, I'd love to buy some corn. So I went to the grocery store and I asked, is there any corn? He said, no, we don't expect to see it for another month or so. I said, what do you mean? I drove through miles and miles of corn. He said, that's genetically engineered gas haul corn. I think, damn, oh, well, we're going to get some. It's coming in from Indiana. I'm thinking, what? 
Now, that, now we're going to run out of corn. We have climate change and UV light now that's up to 12, 13, which means it's going to have crop failures. We've got drought and, or in some places and too much rain in others. And now with all these climate changes, which the idiots try to call is due to carbon credits, and I got this carbon wrap I want to I want to read here in a few minutes, but I want to hear your updates first, Robert, because I have a carbon wrap from our lady Margaret in Australia about her kids that the kids in the school put together that the government sponsored that every every school and every group of children should now sing this rap song that they make up at each school. It's a little different in each one. And this rap song should to talk about the carbon cops and being carbon responsive. This is a kind of mind altering, uh, you know, just like the German Hitler youth or the, uh, the or the or the uh, communist youth in Soviet Union or in China. This is the same like Red Army garbage that they're doing with the uh, carbon cops in Australia. It's disgusting. And you, we call Jew liar Gilar. You're a maniac, and you need to be removed from power. And the new people in Australia get some guts and remove these idiots before they destroy your country. It's the best quality coal. Great resources, fantastic people, but you need to have a titanium backbone transplant. Stop being idiots and get rid of Julia Gallard and these these enviromaniacs because they're not real environmentalists. They have a false dialogue, a false dialectic, and they're trying to control you and steal your resources and crush you. Well, you know, Dr. Bill, you, you talked about the climate change there, and that has certainly become a buzzword for, for global warming, but... The, the Pakistani Tribune just had a an article this week, and their headline said, Climate change, slow melting of glaciers to, del- to de- delay crop sowing. And then their article goes on about talking about climate change and talking about the, the, uh, the water flow of the rivers is 35% below what it should be, and it talks about... Uh, uh, the, the, you know, it goes on and on and on talking about... Uh, and Pakistan's four major crops and how the waters are leaving their, the farmers are leaving their land idle because they don't have enough water. And, and it keeps hammering on the water shortage. You, making you have a you point, think though, making this. Well, it's, it's making you think it's all about global warming. No, and, no. And it's the opposite, forget, isn't it? The water yes, is being exactly. locked up in the glaciers because it's getting colder. That's exactly. Finally, what they do is they, they, then they admit. Punjab's agricultural areas face a water shortage due to the late melting of the Himalayan glaciers. So, I mean, why would those Himalayan glaciers not be melting unless it's getting a little bit colder? Well, we saw that here in Southern California. We've had the latest, coldest uh, spring, summer. I mean, the first few years, we've been here four years now in Southern California. We're only 35 miles from the Mexican border here in North Mm -hmm. County, San Diego. And damn it, it was cold. Even for someone who was a dual citizen who lived in eastern Canada recently, it got cold. I mean, we well, only had summer the last week or so. Before that, yeah. we'd have all the seasons mixed up. We'd have 90-degree temperatures for a day or two in January. And otherwise, most of the time, it was 8 to 15 degrees below normal, right up to about a week or so ago. Yeah, well, and, then, right and, now, and now we've got super high temperatures in the Midwest, and the weirdest thing is the UV index, and Dan's talked about this, is running at 11, 12, 13, which are going to kill crops. And also, area over, area over areas like deserts, it's going to increase desertification of not only America, but other countries. If you've got areas where the ozone layer is gone, and you don't have any desert cover, it kills that desert cover, it decreases oxygen so you don't have any ozone over it, you get further destruction of the desert cover. And uh, this is something that can feed on itself, and so desertification is going to amplify. The desertification over the Gobi Desert in China, they're in a massive famine. Fifty-some years ago, during the time of the Communist Revolution, they had a massive famine, partly caused by bad administration, but also by climate problems. The climate problems now, the desertification, you can go to cities like Shenzhen and Beijing, and the dust clouds from the Gobi Desert are so large and so big that cover thousands of miles, you can't see in front of your car 20 feet. People don't know this. They don't get any news from China to tell them that the people over there are on the verge with this giant economy and all our industry moves there. That's why they're buying up land in Central Africa, Australia, farms in America. The realtors are selling American farms to Chinese investors from the People's Republican Army because they're terrified about food security. That's what's going on. Well, and I, you know, and I see, I see stuff going on right now in the United States and the Northwest that nobody's talking about. Is between now and Sunday night, 
Mount Baker, Washington, is forecast to, to receive up to 29 inches of snow. Uh, between now and Sunday night, Mount Rainier, Washington, is scheduled to get to his forecast to get uh, a foot of snow. Uh, in in Oregon, in Central Oregon, it's now the coldest. It, uh, this week, they've seen some of the coldest temperatures on record in in at least 130 years. So you know, and then this week, our government comes out with with what I consider lies, saying that that we've had another record warmth. Well, there's going to be a new term. Lies are not good, strong enough. How about obscenalize? How's that? Obscenalize are obscenities. are such bad lies are obscenities. They shouldn't even be spoken. Let me read this carbon wrap from the school. And the carbon wrap. This is kids and their teachers now have to do this in assembly all, all the time now for these kids in Sydney, Australia. Uh, Blackheath kids have something to say. Something is not right, and it won't go away. Our climate is changing, and we have to make a stand before the problem gets out of hand. So our message to you is really clear. Our planet's in danger, and that's our fear. Use less energy. That's the golden rule in your home and office, even your school. We can try to shop in our local town so we don't have to drive round and round. Our lights should only be on at night. Lights on when it's sunny? Question mark. Well, that's not right. When it's hot outside, the blinds go down. We don't need air conditioners blowing the air around. All of these machines just using up power, putting carbon into the atmosphere hour after hour, exclamation mark. We can tell our parents we don't have to use the car. We'll walk to school because it's not very far. Public transport's the way to go. It uses less petrol than a car you know. Here's a story about a man named Fred. When it came to saving energy, he did not use his head. We have to say that he wasn't very bright because he turned on the light and left it on all night. He, le he left it on all night, question, question mark. Yeah, he left it on all night. So while he was sleeping, the carbon was increasing. And what did it mean? Well, the earth was a heating. Not cool. This is big capital letters. So to make sure that we're doing it right, the carbon cops will be joining the fight. We'll be out and about checking to see that we're using less electricity. At recess and lunch, we do leave the lights on. The classroom is empty, so that's not just wrong. We don't need the water boiling all the time, so put it on a timer. That'll do just fine. The carbon cops will be checking to see that we're using less electricity. Our carbon footprint will be small uh, if, if we're clever and remember to be on the ball. Turn off the, the machines that we don't really need. We're doing our bit, and we're taking the lead. Just remember that our planet is the only one we've got. We won't survive if it's really, really hot. The end. Oh, that's is that disgusting or what? This is kids. This is kids. Ugh. This is children being mind manipulated, being abused. This is like a form of, of what we call environmental sexual mauling. They're mauling the minds of the young people to tell them a lie that says if you, you're going to save the planet by killing yourself. And again, yes, we can have more efficient cars. Yes, we can pollute less. Yes, we can do these other things. But yes, we can have alternative energy. But no, they suppress the patents for this. And by the way, they're owned by these large industrial giants, and, the, and they're suppressed purposely because they don't want to really reduce real pollution. They want to point to carbon and say it's our fault because you're breathing out carbon dioxide. You don't. He's not going to make... It doesn't matter if you vote for it. Welcome back. And uh, so, Robert, with these climate changes, and we are well into an ice age, we are at the same time, by the way, in January 2014, with Dr. Easterbrook and Dr. Hubbell, and Mazatov, and many others that two years ago stated we're heading into an ice age. The evidence is now mounting that these climate changes now added to the Macondo drill site two years ago, April, a little two years ago in a few months, have completely screwed up the world climate uh, through the heating system of the loop current from the Gulf of Mexico, which is a pacemaker of the world climate and the oceanic currents. On top of that now, we have the upper atmosphere being eaten away by xenon-133 and radioiodine-131. The ultraviolet light is literally impinging, and we're moving into an area called the highly energetic area of the galaxy where cosmic background radiation is increasing rainfall, and rainfall is falling on the Earth, which is the first step in an ice age. The first step in an ice age is not temperature dropping. The first step is increased rainfall, isn't it? 
Oh, absolutely. Actually, it's all, I'm glad you brought that up because it is already cold enough to have an ice age right now. Yes, it, right it now. It doesn't have Just to Just more rainfall and that's it. More rainfall and a couple more years and we're deep in it. And we're not talking about decades either. Three to five years of increasingly significant rainfall in northern latitudes and we're going to start seeing the snowpack not disappear from the Midwest and the so-called growing belt of northern of Canada and you're going to start seeing massive crop failures. And the ozone layer can drop 65 to 75 percent for one hour in the middle of the day and all your grassy plants just like the biblical proscription that's telling us prophetically that when you see the fields white that whiteness is going to occur when the ultraviolet light zaps the crop so badly one day you go in for lunch come out and say oh my gosh how come the next four or five days you're seeing all of the, the the corn all the wheat it's just turning white it's just dying right there it's just there's lots of water. I'm putting water on the crops. I'm irrigating. We put fertilizer on two weeks ago. Why is it dying? It's dying because it got radiation shock. That's no, what I'm telling you is going to happen on combination with the crazy water patterns where we're having too much rain in some places and too little. And, of course, the water's decreasing because it's being locked up in glaciers. Yeah, and, and, you know, when you say it's being locked up in glaciers, you know, I see the IPCC, I see our government all talking about Rising sea levels, sea levels oh, are going to rise three feet. Well, I've seen. sea level, the last two years in a row, according to satellite measurements, sea levels have declined the last two years in a row. Their models are so wrong. Their models are not looking at what happen, is happening in the real world. On my, on my website, iceagenow.info, I do have articles about declining sea level. If somebody just does a search on my website for, for falling sea levels, they'll come across it. Not a lot. I mean, I think they last year they declined by six or seven uh, millimeters, and the year before by just six or seven millimeters. Not much, but that's sure not the, the rising. And the reason is just exactly what you said. The reason they're declining is because snow levels are beginning to accumulate. And... and and as you also said, it's cold enough right now. That's not my words. That came from um, Dr. Morris Ewing. He was head of the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory back in the 1970s. He said that it's cold enough right now to have an ice age. All we need is more moisture. Well, we're getting it. We're getting it right now. And if that moisture starts falling in the winter, or if that moisture starts falling when our skies have been cooled by above-water volcanic activity, then we've got the exact recipe for an ice age. Yeah, exactly. Now, I want to go back to a timeline and get your response and Anne's on this. This is the timeline that I see happening. The next major burp, and we had one that we went back through Alexander Higgins' website, through E&E News and other sources, including on the ground, that back in April there was a massive burp of radiation from Fukushima. That radiation, by the way, is eating away at the ozone layer. That's part of the reason why we're seeing record levels of 12-plus uh, ultraviolet light over midday between 11 and 3 o'clock over cities like Phoenix and Nevada and over Mexico City up to 13 right now. This is not normal. People need to realize normal isn't normal anymore. And in one of the articles that I'm looking at here is this, which will clap first, the economy or the SPF 4? Here's what's going to happen. It doesn't need a collapse. You don't need to have it fall over. You just need a massive radiation release. And that radiation release doesn't require zirconium fire or doesn't require the corium to hit the groundwater table and have a hydro, hydrogen generated hydrogen explosion or a transient nuclear explosion called a dirty bomb explosion because it goes hypercritical and you have enough corium like a lava lamp to explode. The next step is going to be these 1,535 fuel rod assemblies in cooling pool four. And that's only one of seven major sites of stored fuel on there. It's so radioactive now, the two pumps have failed cannot be replaced. They can't get in there because even if you're an idiot and you're going to commit suicide, when you get in there, you won't even remember what day of the week is, whether or not you need to go to the bathroom right now or what your name is. So what's going to happen is Japan is going to end up with a massive radiation release. John has reports that on the ground they're getting ready in Japan for massive uh, uh, evacuation of Tokyo. Tokyo, the Kyoto has already offered to be the alternate capital of, the, of Tokyo. The Japanese have already gone down to Kerala, India, and actually buying up land like crazy. They're putting in rice crops in northern Australia. The Japanese know they're toast. They're just a different culture, so they're not going to make big, flashy comments like Americans. 
the Japanese women have got more cojones than these damn Japanese men that are basically trying to kiss the butts of their bosses. They'd rather die of Kiroshi, which is working their butt off, or lying, drinking too much sake, uh, try, with a smirky face on, trying to lie to us and tell us that TEPCO is keeping it in its level, and there's no problem, there's no non neutron annealing, it's not going to fall over. So Japan this summer, hot summer, Japanese radiation. By late summer, early fall, European collapse. Emergency crisis. In the midst of it, we'll try to have Mr. Obama with his printing presses running at a racing, and you can see a kind of a comic, picture of Obama going down below the, 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 the printing presses underneath the U.S. printing office and saying, how the printed press is going, Ben? And Ben says, they're pretty hot. We're putting water on them because they're, they're overheating, uh, Obama. And he says, well, we need another trillion dollars a minute. How's that? <laughs> and, 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 and Ben says, if I do a trillion, the whole thing could blow. He says, well, I'm sorry, we've got to do it anyway. Just put more water on it and keep printing. And now, while he's printing, by the way, what they're going to do is, this is all by design, you're going to see a bank holiday by the early fall, probably by October, which is always a month when bad things happen, which is right before the election. And during all this conundrum, we have Mitt Romney sitting there smirking with his Asperger's, not either committing to the Mormon church to tell him that he's going to really be a conservative Mormon or to the Christian background, so he's not going to have support below the Mason-Dixon line, as John Moore said. So we will have, no, even if you desire to vote for Romney because you think, well, we got to vote for the lesser of two evils. No, voting for the lesser of two evils means you still have evil. But don't think he's lesser. Don't think he's lesser because he's kissing the butt trying to be the best bad boy you can imagine. He's worked for Bain Capital, which is a Mossad operation, for 20 years. You have to understand who Mitt Romney is. He's not even a conservative Mormon. Okay? So what's going to happen, even if you voted for him, the election will be contested. I predict it will be contesting it probably for about three or four weeks. They'll come out and say the popular vote center goes to Obama. There'll be people trying to remove Obama in the first year or two from the voter roll, saying he should have never been on this voter roll for this state and that state. And the person who had issue, which Donald Trump brought up to the embarrassment of uh, his candidate, uh, you know, Mitt Romney, uh, and Trump, you know, sometimes actually he shines, okay? Sometimes Trump is there, despite his crazy hair, he has some cojones. He'll actually make statements that say, I know why you're successful in business, even though you screwed up a pile of times, is because you're willing to tell the truth in spite of it. So what do you think? I don't think that, uh, that Obama uh, is, is going to slide in again because the Christian right won't get their act together. Conservatives won't they take the good things out of uh, Paul, Ron Paul, and there are some good things about bringing back money here. They need to realize we need to be our brother's keeper. <clears throat> we need to have paid for education. We need to have infrastructure. We need to stop austerity fascism, which is part of the financial side of libertarianism, which I disagree with strongly, and it's not communism. I don't believe in socialism or big government. I think we need to have national certification through boards and no state licensure whatsoever. We need to have private property where we have limited taxes. We need to have infrastructure taken care of. We have to stop these crazy pensions. We have two classes of citizens where we recently had a vote in San Diego County here to keep the uh, bring back the pensions, which are way out of line, and the benefits where the regular working staff is basically hardly able to keep food on this table and people are getting massive pensions here in California where it's just a pork barreling. It's just ridiculous. So thank God they had the sense to pull back. Uh, your comments, are Robert and Dan. Well, I'm I'm going to have to agree with that last part. I I am uh, I'm still hopeful that uh, that Romney is going to do better than Obama. But I do have to hasn't got a hope in a, a prayer until he does two things. He repents before the Mormon Church, his policies, and the Christian background. And if you don't have your base, he's not going to make it. And he has a chance. He can repent. We can pray for him. That he has this massive appearance of light over his head that says, oh my gosh, I've been a bad Mormon. I haven't even appealed to the conservative right and the personhood issues. And don't smirk and sit in the camera with your Ashburgers and think you're going to get elected unless you actually speak to the conservatives. And that means don't be there ready to do war just because it's the right thing to do for the ultra-right wing hawks in the Republican Party. You've got to speak to your base if you want to get elected.